first it was found in stool, then it was found in placentas, and now it's also found in blood. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today I am going to talk about the impact of microplastic and we're going to look at the issues, where it comes from, how we can avoid it, the consequences. We have been talking a lot about microplastic. I've mentioned it a million times on this channel as well. I have a specific impact video all about the impact of plastic, where it also plays a pretty big part. But I think in the light of a recent study that was just published about how now we have also found microplastic in human blood, I wanted to do an extra awareness video. It's safe to say that microplastic has absolutely infiltrated basically every single crevice of our existence at this point. And honestly, that thought gives me an absolute ache. Microplastic is also continuously found in growing quantities in our oceans. According to the UN, there are more than 51 trillion pieces of microplastic in our oceans today, which is 500 times more than there are stars in our galaxy. So today we're going to look at the impact, we're going to look at how we can avoid them and um, easy peasy, let's have a great time. Let's overcompensate with humour. First of all, definition. The plastic doesn't break down, it's made from a fossil material, it can degrade in quality and when that happens, plastic becomes smaller bits of plastic and at one point they become the tiniest bits of plastic and those bits are called microplastic. And a microplastic particle is defined as something that is less than five millimeters in diameter. Microplastic is derived from many different sources, some of which we're going to talk about today, and many different conditions can generate microplastic, from ocean waves to sun radiation to wear and tear and use. There's plenty of options to fuck shit up. I also want to distinguish between primary and secondary microplastic because those two are not the same. Most primary microplastic is manufactured to be small and there is an intention to the microplastic. It's not something that happens accidentally, it's something that is designed into the product. So it can be derived from consumer products, it can be derived from synthetic materials, it can be microbeads in care products, it can be, you know, something that is made to react this way. And then there's secondary microplastic. That's all the stuff we didn't intend to happen. This is what happens, for instance, if a plastic bottle ends up in our oceans and it starts degrading into microplastic. Overall, I think the definition states that secondary microplastic is when larger pieces of plastic accidentally or unintentionally degrade into microplastic. About 15 to 31-ish percent of all microplastic is primary and 69 to 89 percent of microplastic is secondary. And microplastic has been found in basically every living organism, from the tiniest plankton to the largest animals on the planet, and also the largest idiots. Us. <laughs> it's also evident in both seafood and drinking water. And a big issue with microplastic and our ingestion of microplastic generally comes from the fact that our water filtration, water treatment plants are not suited or designed to filter away microplastic because it's so small. So our facilities can't do it. As an emerging field study, there isn't actually a lot about microplastic yet. We don't really know the long lasting effects of it. And it's generally something that scientists are still trying to figure completely out. Both when it comes to our own bodies, our health and the environment, we don't quite know yet what the long lasting effects of microplastic will be. Here's some of the studies I referenced in the beginning of the video about microplastic. This year in a paper published in Environment International, researchers found plastic in the blood of 17 to 22 of student participants, or about 75% of participants. Last year, a study found microplastics were present in all placental portions. This study found that microplastics carry with them substances that can act as hormone disruptors and can cause long-term effect on human health, especially when exposed to this stuff before you're even born. And in 2019, various microplastics were found in human stool all over the world. I also found this article about microplastic and the potential environmental and physical consequences of it. It was on a page called This Is Plastic, which is a just like an educational platform um, created by plastic manufacturers. Isn't that lovely? And in their article, they focus a lot on the fact that we don't actually know if microplastic is harmful or not. And they're sort of skating towards the, well, then it isn't harmful. 
because we don't know yet. While the sources they're citing concludes that we need to do more research. And while I definitely don't believe in panicking and, you know, stopping our entire existence because we have microplastic inside our bodies, I also don't think not caring about it at all is the right approach. Especially because plastics not only microplastics, but all types of plastics usually carry with them substances and hormone disruptors and just really, really bad stuff. Like stabilizers or flame retardants or other possibly toxic chemical substances that can be very harmful when ingested. The evidence about nano and microplastics remains uncertain and it's by its nature complex, but there is so far no good reason to think they pose widespread risks to humans or the environment. Are you guys okay? Now, common sources of microplastic. Now they is an overall understanding that the majority of microplastic we see today actually comes from mismanaged waste, aka secondary microplastic. Most recent reports on microplastic focus mostly exclusively on the quantification of these secondary sources and on waste reduction and management. The category mismanaged waste overall accounts for consumer products as well as more industrial waste like fishing gear. Now for primary sources of microplastic, synthetic textiles and the microplastic derived, generated from synthetic textiles takes up the biggest spot with an estimated 35% of microplastic coming from this source. Synthetic textiles are made from plastic. We have recently talked about synthetic textiles in my The Most Unsustainable fabrics video. So the gist is generally that because it's derived from plastic or plastic components, whenever we wear them, we use them, we wash them or we dry them, they end up releasing microplastic into our water systems. And it happens all the time. The yearly consumption of fiber for apparel amounts to 69.7 million tons globally, around 11 kilograms per capita. And synthetic fibers represent almost two thirds of this consumption. About 60% of all our clothing comes from synthetic sources, which is often petroleum derived, which is just fossil and plastic. And the next biggest source of primary microplastic comes from car tires because usually today they are not made from natural rubber but they are made from synthetic rubber and they account for about 28% of all primary microplastic. So when you drive your car or a bus or even your bike the tire will slightly wear down over time and where does that bit of the tire go? Well that becomes microplastic and is washed into our oceans and water systems through rain and wind. Next category is city dust, accounting for about 24% of microplastic. This category includes a bunch of small things, but basically everything that happens in urban areas can be sort of crammed into this section. And most of these things are pretty small impact, tiny by themselves, but when put into like the city dust category, it does add up. It includes the abrasion of objects like kitchen utensils or Footwear. It includes abrasion of infrastructure like artificial lawns, household dust, harbors and building paint. And yeah, 24%. 7% of primary microplastic comes from road markings. So that's what we do when we paint different symbols and structures on our roads. That paint also wear away over time and is over time also washed out into our oceans and water systems. Now we're moving into some pretty small microplastic sources, but I still think it's interesting. We also have marine coatings. This is what happens when you paint ships. You generally paint ships to protect them from water and yeah overall we like we paint buildings we also paint ships and that paint is made from synthetic polymers aka plastic components that paint will start to chip away over time and overall that adds up to about 3.7 percent of microplastic pollution then we have personal care products that contain microbeads and microplastic that can be stuff like toothpaste or face scrubs exfoliants makeup, all this kind of stuff that have small microbeads in them. Many places today these products have been banned but they are still in circulation a lot and microbeads from cosmetics and care products add up to about 2% of primary microplastic pollution. These were the most common sources of microplastic from mismanaged waste to plastic pellets. So let's take a look at now how to avoid microplastic, both how to avoid 
generating it and also how to avoid ingesting it. First of all, because there's microplastic in our drinking water and to avoid ingesting a lot of microplastic, you can get a tap water filter. According to tap water, about 94% of the water in taps in the US contains microplastic and about 72% in Europe. But you can get filters that specifically pick those up. Another way of avoiding a lot of microplastic is to drink tap water rather than bottled water whenever that's possible. It's not possible to drink the tap water everywhere in the world, I do know. But when it is possible, to choose tap water that generally has less microplastic than bottled water. Bottled water on average has 22 times more microplastic. If you only drank bottled water for a year you would consume 130,000 microplastic particles per year. Also avoid care products with microplastics and microbeads. Those are exfoliants, the toothpaste with the tiny small things are also usually plastic derived, exfoliant scrubs etc those things that contain plastic. Because the thing is when we wash those products off or spit those products out they go down our drain and that ends up in our oceans. Also, and this is perhaps a little bit of a yeah no duh, but use less plastic in your household in general. If everyone used less plastic whenever and wherever that was possible, microplastics would be a smaller problem. So Outface, especially single-use plastic products, as much as you can. I have literally hundreds of videos on how to do that and I will leave some of the most important ones down below. Also, reduce your consumption of meat, dairy, seafood and fish. There's microplastic in a bunch of different foods, but it's very prominent in animal foods. So simply phasing those out, if not for all the other benefits of doing that as well, you're also going to avoid a lot of microplastic when doing so. Air dry your clothes and generally wash your clothes more consciously. A wash cycle of synthetic textiles can release up to 700,000 pieces of microplastic per wash cycle. And drying clothes made from polyester, nylon, etc. also release a bunch of microplastic and also really shortens the lifespan of those products. So whenever you can, air dry or minimize time in the dryer. And also a lot of clothes don't have to be washed after one use. Of course, stuff like underwear has to be washed after one use but many other types of clothing do not. Actually if I have like a pair of jeans and they have like a funky smell to them but they're not like dirty dirty I'll start by putting them in the freezer because that will kill the smell. Fix it! Take the train! Or generally use transportation opportunities that do not involve tires. Hey! Whenever we're looking at sustainable transportation and sustainable travel buses are going to be more polluting than trains overall and specifically also when it comes to microplastic pollution because buses also have tires big ass ones actually and trains do not so use the train a hey. and and this is the final one i've talked about it many times before but ditch glitter glitter most glitter there is plant-based eco glitters out there but the majority of glitter we see in like craft diy materials in many types of makeup etc is made from either pet or pvc which is two types of plastic and when we use them we flush all that glitter right down the drain and it becomes microplastic instantly mm. if you have ever like had a party where you had to use glitter for something you will find glitter in your house you you can move houses and you can still find glitter 10 years later from that one night i am still haunted by glitter from 2014 I don't know how that's happening, but it keeps being there. So imagine that's just in the environment constantly. The environment is everyone's house and it's constantly haunted by past parties where we use glitter where we shouldn't have. Overall, sort of like a final conclusion, is it completely possible to avoid all microplastics all the time? No, it isn't. But we can minimize the damage, the potential damage, I'm so sorry. We can minimize the potential damage because we do not yet know the long lasting effects of microplastic. I don't want this to be a video that sort of will spread panic throughout the entirety of the zero waste community. I don't think that is helpful or constructive, but I think it's important that we know about these things so we can adjust our habits so we can consume consciously. And I think that's what it's all about. So this is not about avoiding all types of microplastic. You will likely not feel the effects of minimal microplastic in your body. Likely not. Let's assume that, right? That's a good idea. I, this is dark humor at this point. I'm so sorry. Anyway, that was microplastic. I hope you liked this video. If you have any follow-up questions, if you have any comment you would like to add, leave them down below. I would love to hear you guys out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you like this video and I hope you will consider subscribing to your girl. It would make her day. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye.
Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!